Well, Andrew McLeod is a former senior UN official and spokesperson for Hear Their Cries, the whistleblower charity, and joins me now uh, from our London studio. Uh, Andrew, you've worked in the aid sector. Is this kind of problem restricted to Oxfam or is it a wider issue? This is a system-wide, charity-wide problem. It's not just Oxfam, it's not just Britain, it is absolutely global. And finally, the news is starting to come out. Um, now, Andrew, the government in the UK is threatening to withdraw funding to Oxfam in light of these revelations. Do you think they should? Yeah, I do. But it's not an opportunity to cut f uh, aid, it's an opportunity to fix aid. So you don't cut it and then just put it back to consolidated revenue. Cut it and give it to a charity that is demonstrable. Here's a good idea. Cut it from Oxfam and give it to Hear Their Cries so we can have more uh, hearing, more listening to the whistleblowers and more listening to the cries of the children that are victims. No, cut it from Oxfam because they've clearly over the last couple of days haven't understood the moral dimension of their crime. Even now, there is still a question about whether some of the prostitutes this man used were, were children. This man, if they were children, has broken um, Belgian sex tourism laws and the charity still hasn't given the dossier to the police. Not, not yet. OK, uh, but Andrew, if Oxfam should have its funding restricted and you say that this is a problem which is affecting uh, charities across the sector, mm. should people donating, should they stop donating to these charities until this problem is solved and what impact right. would that have? Right, I would have asked people this, if you want to know if the charity that you're wanting to donate to is taking this seriously, ask them one question. How many of your staff over the last five years have you reported to the police force for suspicious activity? If the answer is zero, then the charity is not taking it seriously. You actually want a charity like Save the Children that actually does pass dossiers to the police. The critical thing here, to get changed behaviour here, people have to go to jail. But what you've also said in that question is very, very important. The vast majority of aid workers are good people. The vast majority of aid work that's done is needed. This is why I say don't cut aid, fix aid. If people were, there, there's a big uh, question now that charities' reputations have been damaged and there is a real risk that people will not want to continue giving to charity. What sort of impact do you envisage this scandal having on charitable work in the future? I think it's, there's a real burden on charities now to be able to establish that they have best-in-class recruitment, training, prevention, detection and reporting for prosecution mechanisms. They're the five things you can start to measure a charity on. How okay. do they recruit? What is their training? Prevention, detection and prosecution. And I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there, but thanks very much. Andrew McLeod speaking to us from London. Thank you very much.